part of this this growing sort of illiberalism and this focus on getting the right narratives out there and this battle of narratives and Mac McManus and his um, book, the, Ri- the Rise of Postmodern Conservatism, is very, very good on this because it shows how that, that same um, kind of living in an, an, an illusion, this in, imaginary system that um, it is, is emerging on, on the right. And we, we do see this. We, we see cultural appropriation on the right. If, if somebody has, has recast a character as black, for example, then they're suddenly outraged because this is not, this is not their culture. And it, it's such, so much of a mirror image. And that's because it's, it's the same very postmodern narrative trumps truth. You know, on the one side, we had the postmodernism. On the other, we had the post truth system. But I, I think um, what you're speaking to, particularly at, at the end there, with these systems that <coughs> are growing, is probably best um, addressed that, that I have ever seen by some work in, in progress by Mike Nainer. Do you know the Australian filmmaker? I do. He made a film with you and James yes. and Peter, I think. Yeah. And, and uh, what you had said recently, just now about John Gray, and then particularly about these these systems that are being in, imposed on people is what well, feeds very much into a concept that he is developing of discourse engineering, which is when you know pe- people are trying to bypass a rational mind, decide for people's own good what they can and can't be be told. And now you know you, you can make, make some arguments for um, sidelining um, really factually completely in, inaccurate things about the Earth being flat. And, um, and, you know, not having this in science magazines, for example. But the, the idea that, that people cannot evaluate bad ideas for themselves, that we must be, be fed something that has been monitored. And again, not even on the grounds of, of evidence, but on the grounds of being adversarial to a, a particular narrative. That's, that is a, a current problem of our age, which I think speaks much more to Mike's particular work. Than, than mine. I, I focus much more on the sort of ideological um, castles um, and fantasy worlds that people are, are building and then trying to reside in and then wondering why it doesn't work. Do you think there's a, a way out of this stopping short of unplugging the internet? Because clearly it sounds like what's happening is people are trying to meme whole populations into their preferred way of, uh, you know, living um governing all those things viewing other groups um i i I wonder if there ever is going to be a reckoning amongst um the the internet uh algorithmic overlords as it were because um it it seems to me that those people who spend the least time online probably will report much higher levels of mental well-being feeling like they're connected to those around them doing things worthwhile etc and most of us are um, typically swept up in the currents of, you know, the latest hashtag trend, um, the kind of the, the whole of the Internet um, is effectively geared toward um, creating a herd mentality in every direction you can possibly imagine. So uh, I don't really know how at some point it gets co-opted for good without it being engineering per se but i suppose just how do you stand down all of this stuff that's sending us off into these these different groups or you know is it the make the case of making the full the full gamma of um just freedom for everybody and let them do what they want um even if they're trying to engineer stuff and let let it go as it is uh, i don't i don't really know where we're we're going to go from here I, I have to say, I, I cannot um, set out a, a solution to you how we are we are going to find our, our way out of various different um, elements of the the kind of narrative war of narratives Maya that we're finding ourselves in, and that the growing escalation and polarization and um, decrease of, of value for what is for what is true and other people's right to to hold their own views. It's it's a big complex mess, and although I would like to save the world, I cannot, um, in in honesty, set out a plan for you. I, I think different aspects of this have got to be 
addressed in different ways. Jonathan Haidt, have you seen his new book, The Anxious Generation? So he, he has um, convinced me um, to shut down my social media accounts, which I have. I am no longer on them. And, and the, the benefits of this for mental health is, is um, extraordinary. Keeping these away from, from children so that they can at least develop um, having a sort of healthy play-based childhood, I think that is is very important. I'm seeing some interest and, and a kind of hunger for authenticity, for um, for truth, for liberalism that is emerging from the toxic stew at, at the moment. I'm I'm hearing from increasing numbers of people who want to get behind a and an inspiring and a solid concept of liberalism where people will say, let people believe, speak, live as they see fit, provided it harms no one else, nor does, nor stops them from doing the same. But it has within it as well that very strong no feature where we, we do not just let ideas float about. We also have a value for uh, reason, for evidence. And I, I see more people who are now looking for something solid because my fear is that while the UK is backing away from this really sort of postmodern um, thing, it, it's going to head into a post-liberal um, time as well. And it's going to, to shrink in. It's going to become very small. It's going to <coughs> oppose um, uh, growth and exploration. A lot of the post-liberal thinkers seem to see um, science as, um, as as frightening, technology as as dangerous, uh, progress as a myth, and um, and and really want to 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 kind of return us to being a small island off the coast of France, not known for thinking very much. So I am opposed to this um, this post-liberal movement, which seems to me to be born of culture wars fatigue. And I, I think we need, and Matthew Dancona in his book on post-truth wrote a wonderful thing about this. We need an inspiring, um, a, a narrative of, of liberalism. And he said, call it, tell us the truth and to, to get more people on board with, with wanting to protect our freedoms and also wanting to protect our, our heritage as, um, as, as defenders of science and reason. And um, this whole sort of marketplace of ideas, and I'm my my only hope is that the cultural tide will shift, and I see some signs of it, for people to have a stronger wish for a solid system like that, rather than shrinking into themselves or going off into di diverse little denominations of of personal truth, that we will come back at some point to a need for evidence-based epistemology and consistently liberal ethics. And that's what I'm going to argue for continuously. 